Thanks for coming out. I think it's good to show that a lot of people out here are pro-life, uh, especially in the face of what's been happening recently with uh, the Governor Northman and uh, his remarks of creating, uh, I guess, permissible abortion, uh, killing a human life, uh, especially up to like the time when it's born. Uh, so what would you be out here advocating for? Or what is your reason for being here? Well, it affects me personally because of uh, what my daughter went through and bringing my grandson into this world. But it, it seems like it's so much about Republicans or Democrats or politics or a uh, woman's choice, but you don't hear a lot about uh, when does life begin? When does human life begin? And I think that needs to be the issue that settles the whole thing. If, it, if there's life, it should be given the liberty that it should have. But if not, then we don't even have a, anything to talk about. So just get down to the bottom line. When does life begin? Right. What do you think, like, in terms of, like, even from the left, they'll say, you know, they're pro-choice, but they're not pro-choice in the kind of health insurance that you want or the schools you can send your kids to or where you would want your money when it's taken from you from taxes to be spent to? Oh, absolutely. There's some inconsistencies. Right. And I think the comments from our governor uh, just in the past couple of weeks have been really concerning because it's even taken people that would uh, be pro-choice to another level. If you talk about a baby being born and then uh, giving it time to be made comfortable and while a discussion's made, uh, it's obvious it's life. And with all the advancements we have now, sonograms and all of that, you can just see it. So that's why I get back to when does human life begin? When would you say it uh, begins? I believe it begins at conception. But at the same time, even someone that's going to be liberal about the idea, you're talking about around 21 days of heartbeat. When someone dies, uh, the heart stops beating. So when there's life, there's, it's a heartbeat. So, but I do lean toward earlier at conception. And there, we do provide a lot of mechanisms for uh, keeping people alive, even if their heart can't beat on their own, right? Like heart pacers, right? Yeah. Or we have machines for, for lungs and stuff like Absolutely. that, right? So we have a lot of things to keep people being alive even if they can't do it on their own, right? Absolutely, and sometimes families have to make the, the hard decisions about how long to extend that, but we're talking with, a, with an unborn child of continuing to grow and to develop, and I'm also a minister, and I know the Word of God speaks clearly to life before birth. So, uh, you know, it's, it's even bit built into our Declaration of Independence uh, that we're um, life. You know, we're, we're granted life. That's the first one, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, uh, again, if it comes back down to, is it a human life? Right. And it's interesting because you find that um, in many states, even under federal law, that uh, if a woman is pregnant and you kill her, that counts as a double homicide. Absolutely. Right? I heard someone speaking... Um, on the decision that was made in New York and how the Freedom Tower was lit up to celebrate the decision that was made there about uh, late-term abortions. And, uh, you know, at the foot of that tower, they said there's a memorial to a lady that lost her life in the 9-11, uh, but and it also mentions her unborn child. So if we celebrate life there, why can't we celebrate it across the board and just be consistent? Right, yeah, and the left are all about, well, you know, you can't deport children over the border, but they're okay with killing children up to, uh, like, nine months. And there's penalties for cruelty to animals and, and all of that. So right. it's, it's disturbing. And what I would like is someone, both sides, to be able to sit down and have a civil conversation about it, to be polite to one another and kind, but, but really debate the issues and not call people this or that because of... Um, where they take a stand, but really look at truth. And truth corresponds with reality. And truth is not invented, truth is discovered. And I think it's well worth a conversation, a civil conversation. Right, what do you think about in terms of like, and being in pro-life and that we value human life, right? Uh, and, and protect it from like the initiation of force and aggression, that the same stance has to be also be extended to uh, that in the face of government, that many times government in itself isn't very pro-life. Like for example, like selective service forces your boys to be forced to sign up for military service in the event there's a war, right? Lest they risk uh, two years imprisonment and uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines, right? That's not very pro-life if you threaten their life with imprisonment uh, if they don't sign up.
Um, so outside of the realm of like abortions, there's other areas of pro-life issues. I think we should also extend this in the face of government that many times isn't very pro-life in their own terms. Oh, absolutely. I, I personally believe that we have to be able to defend our country. I believe right now, thankfully, I came along right as the draft, I guess, was being ended in America. Right. But um, That's not very pro-life, where they threaten your life if they don't allow them to enslave you into a military draft, right? I guess I come from the standpoint, thankfully, we don't have that right now, so that's not as much the issue. But I come from a time that if, if we don't stand strong as Americans, then we may not have the freedom to be able to stand out here today and tell our story. Right. But um, as Americans, we have a good history of standing up for ourselves, <laughs> not needing a standing army. Like the American Revolutionary War didn't begin with uh, with the standing army. It started off with uh, uh, militias, right? Minutemen, people going out there in, in the face of that tyranny and fighting back and shooting back. Right. There is a lot, a lot of debate in regards to, you know, that uh, someone when we were coming up here today said something about, well, what about gun control? You know, that's another another right. big hot topic of the issue. And, and, you know, one thing about gun control, I, when I grew up, uh, you had uh, a lot of popularity with the Westerns and stuff on TV. And I remember they would sell like cowboy outfits at the store and things like that. And, you know, rifles and this and that without the little orange tips on them and stuff. And right. you did not hear about the, the killings and the stuff that you hear about today. Right. And I don't know of any guns in and of themselves that kill anyone. Just like when we talk about abortion, the tools in and of themselves doesn't take life. It's the person behind the tools, right. using the tools. Same thing with the guns, it's the human heart. Right. And if we can make an impact in regards to where our hearts are, then some of these other things that we can talk about, such as gun control, can, can be a lot more simplified. Right, yeah, especially. So, like, it's that's just one thing I find it difficult to sometimes have civil conversations with the left. Then I just for killing babies, but they're also a way for taking away my means of self-defense, right? So making myself even more vulnerable to be harmed, one could say. Right. right yeah. I mean, it's... I wish it did not come down to a Republican, Democrat, uh, conservative, liberal type viewpoint, but unfortunately that seems to be what's argued. Right. Uh, and it's a, a strong contrast today, right. and that, that that's sad yeah. that it becomes about what your party stands for rather than than what what is truth when it comes to uh, just for take for the example life. Right. I mean, again, we don't have a, a pro uh, life movement if there is no life. You know, that would shut the whole thing down. We're all here as a result of our parents not aborting us and choosing life, yeah. <laughs> right? My wife's family encouraged an abortion when she was conceived. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, being in her situation, just could have died. And now, as you can see on this poster, Gage is six years old. Now he just turned seven. But this was him at 11 weeks early. 2.5 pounds. What a beautiful boy. And you know, <laughs> this could have been, from what I'm understanding, uh, from what's just come out, he could have been a discussion right. between a doctor and the mother. And of course, to me, that's beyond, beyond, why would we even argue that that's not life? Right. Or that that child doesn't have rights? If a, it doesn't stand, if an immigrant comes into the United States, it's been argued that there should be afforded some rights and, and things. Well, he, this child would even come into the world. Well, you see, that's not, a, that's not an immigrant, they'll say, right? That's not from the third world, right? It's okay if it's, uh, I find, white children that they kind of advocate against this for, but if it's other people, other cultures, that's a different story. And unfortunately, the conversation was about the statement our governor made about, well, you can just make it comfortable and then we'll have a discussion about the future of the baby, the mother and the physicians and stuff. Well, and then the bill that was narrowly defeated uh, to change uh, abortion laws in Virginia. Well, when the various pictures came out from your books, the discussion has now gone to that. And I understand a big uproar about that. But at the same time, there's not the same uproar when we're talking about baby. Right, I think this sort of thing should 
be continue to be shown so much as like when people are advocating the uh, abolition of slavery, the images of uh, the life of these people that had endured slavery were very horrific for people to see, or like the images from the Holocaust and stuff like that. And I think these kinds of images that people will show, like the effects and how it's done, should continue to go to draw the kind of ire and that kind of conversation uh, to show like the reality of what happens when you know when you kill a baby within like the second um, trimester, or even. Exactly. Right? I mean, th this. I think it was uh, talked about that you know abortions go beyond. Uh, the begin, beginning of the third trimester, which my daughter had just started. So when she had just started that, this is what we're talking about, whether it's in the womb or outside the womb, we're talking about life. Mm -hmm. And that life has all the potential of being a fine young man or a fine young lady. And I think we should, for those that have had abortions, those that have struggled with that, and we should show as much compassion and love to those people. Uh, we're not haters of them. Um, I read a, I've got a book actually in my library by uh, the late Jerry Falwell, If I Should Die Before I Wake. And it talks about a young lady's testimony in there, how she went through an abortion and how as a result of him being asked, what are you doing about this? That he started the Liberty Godparent Home. And you know, there's answers. There's, we should be willing to come alongside people that are struggling and uh, help them along. And I believe the pro-life communities and churches are willing to do that. Right, there, are, there are parents who can't conceive of children themselves. They're looking to adopt Absolutely. children, right? You know, so there's a place where these kinds of uh, conversations can't take her, right? If somebody doesn't, doesn't want to keep a child. I think part of the law here that was trying to be passed or was uh, it would be like the state of the mental state of the, of the mother, which is a very subjective, subjective thing. You can't really, I would say, test for most of that. Um, and trying to remove at least three doctors from having uh, like, you know, yes, this is, uh, this is what's occurring. This is a detrimental to her, to her health, you could say. Down to one doctor. And I would say most people have one doctor that kind of okays whatever you, you want for the most part. Generally, you know? people can find people that will agree with their okay. point of view. Right. Uh, what would you say, my last uh, point I want to like to bring up, topic would be uh, something for consideration is that uh, to be pro-life, I would say, and going back to the state, that uh, I would say taxation in and of itself isn't very pro-life and that when the government demands your money, they do it under, under a threat of your life because if you don't surrender your money to the government, you know, they'll threaten to foreclose our house. They'll threaten to, uh, you know, to uh, garnish your wages. Uh, and if you don't hand over your property to the government, uh, they, will, they will threaten your life for that reason. Well, there, there's definite lines that Americans have to draw. But I think, that, and it's a good thing to close with the words of Jesus, render unto Caesar the things of Caesar's, the things that are God's to him. But God did also say uh, in his commandments with his own words to the earth, do not steal and what are taxes but theft? Well, it supports our nation. That's a whole different yeah. <laughs> ball game. I mean, we could I mean, the church does a great great job in philanthropy, one of the largest philanthropic group in, in the country in terms of giving and charity. I think we can achieve so much through such a, such a notion, such a way of helping each other without the force of a gun, right? Right. I've never here in America really felt forced with a gun. I, I was not a, a favorite of the uh, health insurance, the Affordable Care Act. Right. Uh, you have to pay a tax on it, right? A right. Total and I've, I've been paying that tax. Right. So I, I totally understand that. But you know, when I look at what we have in America and how we're treated in America compared to other countries, uh, regardless of the taxation issue, and it's, it's hit me, believe you me, um, we're still very blessed here in America. I would say so too. I mean, that's why people try to come here, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for the you. conversation. I appreciate the talk. You come out here and supporting and being pro-life. Right, thank you for your time.